This is The Extra Mile. everyone, welcome back to the Extra Mile. I'm Caleb Spear along with G5. The G5. Today we got some guests with us to talk about 2020 in review. We got Ethan Fulton. Howdy folks. And then we got the one and only Josh Duncan. Hey there. Wearing the uh, ugly sweater. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, I take offense bomb. to that. May the holidays be with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ethan was telling us before we started recording that he doesn't like Star Wars. Well, it's not that I don't like it. I've just never seen it. So What? We, Any yeah. sci-fi at all? Well, I mean, I guess sci-fi's I've seen, but just not Star Wars. But <laughs> yeah, there has been I, tension on the set since he made the statement. Yeah, I we, we, had, we almost got a fist fight earlier, but <laughs> yeah. we're good now. We're, oh man! <laughs> so, uh, on a serious note, uh, 2020 has been a long year for many reasons, and everyone's had very different, impactful experiences. We're just going to quickly review it and look at it with some Bible verses and from a Christian point of view. And no better place to start, obviously, than in January of 2020. Yeah, so starting off January, we had the Australian wildfires that burned over 13.3 million acres, and wow. a ton of people lost their homes. Wow. I, I barely remember that. Introducing 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Just fire. remember pictures of koalas and fire. That's, that's yeah. all I, no, I really yeah. remember. Yeah, that was it. And then uh, also in there, we had... Um, yeah, so we had Kobe yeah. and his, his daughter uh, tragically passing away. Um, definitely... Uh, a lot of weight behind that one. I remember I was with a bunch of guys um, at school, and we were doing our uh, Master Follies practice, for those of you who know what Master Follies is. And, oh, yeah, those are fun. Um, you know, the stories started <laughs> coming out, and, like, it, it was just, like, um, just a very depressing feeling came over everyone. It was, it was crazy. Hmm. Yeah. I can imagine that, something like that. Because you guys are just going crazy during those Master Folly things. Yeah. I yeah, mean, and it, it was, like, just instantly, like, we were, we were all having a good time and lots of energy and stuff, and then th those came out, and it was just kind of just crashed. Man. We had a lot of celebrity deaths this year. Yeah, yeah not, not only Kobe, but all, uh, also Alex Trebek, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Chadwick yeah. Boseman, wow. uh, and the one that probably struck me the hardest, Eddie Van Halen. Hey, what about Sean Connery? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Double yeah, 007. I, mean, <laughs> well, I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess, you know, whenever I was – seeing this, whenever I was seeing the, the deaths of the celebrities that we had this year, uh, it, it got me to thinking, you know, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at this. Whenever the celebrities pass away, what you see a lot of is tributes. Uh, tributes everywhere. You see people posting pictures, uh, uh, posting Facebook statuses, saying how much they loved that person. And, you know, even Chadwick Boseman, uh, Disney released a uh, a documentary tribute oh, wow. for a king. Uh, so we see how the world will stand on its head, really, to glorify high-ranking members of its society. And we see that, and they look past every mistake, every uh, bad thing that they did. And that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with people looking past the mistakes once somebody has gone and uh, just focus on the good things that they did. What, what I find interesting is that we see them doing this for celebrities, but then we look at our Lord, our Lord Jesus, and how he went through this life, did nothing wrong. And in fact, the, the only thing that he ever did was uh, teach, love us, and die for our sins. And yet we see that in his time and afterwards, after his death and resurrection, he's hated because of it and vilified because of it. Also on the other end of the spectrum, you, you do see Praise God for the longevity, for his perfect plan mm -hmm. of his kingdom. Amen. Because it has been almost 2,000 years since Jesus was resurrected, and we still honor him, hopefully, every day, every yeah. minute. Um, but we honor him together every first day of the week. A lot of these celebrities that have passed away within the last few years, we, we're not even going to remember that they did pass away until somebody reminds us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it just it makes you think of what is the legacy that we leave in this life? What is, what is it that when we pass away, what, it, what are we leaving behind? And you can, you can contrast what we see through the celebrities and what we see through members of the church, yeah. faithful members of the church. That reminds me of Proverbs. Proverbs 
13 in verse 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of a sinner is stored up for the righteous. And when you look at people who have lived their lives for Christ, loving Christ, living for Christ, when they are gone, they leave a gift that will go from generation to generation and hopefully lead mm. people to our Savior, who we have eternal life through. That question of what will our legacy be makes me think of King David. I think, I don't have him in notes, I think it was Acts 13 where it said he served his own generation. And that's what we should all be known for and obviously giving glory to God. Lots to think about, such as with the celebrity deaths. And, and we're just getting into February now. <laughs> uh, February, remember the whole impeachment process, Trump was acquitted. But during all this, um, COVID sneakily is spreading throughout the world. And in March the whole world stops. You all very much so uh, remember this. We don't know how dangerous it is. We know it's really contagious um, and everything locks down. And by April, 22 million Americans had lost their job. So there was a lot of impacts, uh, even in the financial world. Um, but where were you guys when everything shut down, if you remember anything like that? Oh, man, I remember... I just remember just being in shock, like, oh, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's yeah. just going to be fine. It's, and then when it did, I was like, oh, man, I, March Madness was going on. And I was really looking forward to that. And uh, being I'm not a sports person at all, but for some reason, just just the ballot is fun. But then it's gone. And, uh, yeah. and it, when uh, Mark Cuban was in awe that, you know, the NBA was canceled or March Madness was canceled, I yeah. was like, well, maybe there is something to this. If they're canceling a big sport like that or, or whatever. Yeah, I remember I was in class, um, and they're in the School of Business at LCU. We have the uh, like the stock market ticker up on the wall, and so it's you know playing through everything every day. And uh, so we're sitting in class, and uh, our teacher said, "Hey, y'all come out here. Y'all need to look at this." And so we walked out there, and there was already um, a couple other teachers that brought their classes out there, and we were just looking at it, and there was not a single green arrow pointing up. Everything was red pointing down. And so I remember. Um, you know, I get notifications from the Wall Street Journal on my phone. Wow. Um, and like every day after that, it was like, um, you know, stock market continues to crash because of fears over, you know, unknown of the virus or something, something yeah, like that. And it's just insane how you, you're like, it can't go any lower, can it? And then it just kept going lower and lower and lower. And it was up so high, too. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's yeah, something to see. And there's lots of fear <clears throat> going on. And of course, we were locked down from church. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that. I think that's really when it started hitting home for, for us locally. Um, yeah. You know, you, you finally, you hear about all this stuff and it finally, you get starts, you start getting stuff taken away and, and it really makes you understand the importance of, of gathering together as a family mm -hmm. um, in the church. Um, because you, as Christians, we need that. We need that encouragement. Um, we need that refresher um, every, every week um, to, to go out there and to, to do good works in the kingdom. And, and by not having that, it's kind of like, you know, I, I thought of it as like electricity. Um, you know, you, you don't really appreciate power um, until, <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Uh, until it's gone. And you go to try to plug your phone in during a power outage, you're like, man, I really loved that power outlet. <laughs> and now, now I don't have it. But, but yeah, it, you just, it, it started hitting home. And, and for me, at least, it made me realize how important the church is. And not only just going to church, but... Um, you know, going and being invested um, yeah. in, in your church family. The fellowship. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I remember like a week or two of the home worship. I was like, man, I miss congregational singing. Mm -hmm. Really miss that all, yeah. man. Even as, a, as an introvert, you know, <clears throat> you, I like the being, being in my shell. I could live in a closet. But at the same time, it can only last so long before you need someone you just need human interaction. Yeah. You need other people. You need to bear one another's burdens, as you know, as we're told in the scriptures. And when you're in lockdown, you're in separate homes. It's really hard to do that. And mm -hmm. so when that came up, we had to find creative ways to continue to connect with one another, and continue worshiping together. Um, and so it, it was, it, it opened up some positives at the same time, but at the same time, it was also very hard. And really, you saw it. one of the most beautiful things of it, and praise God for it, is you saw really an outpouring of uh, people really trying to do good for each other. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. saw people dropping things off, getting in touch with people, writing people. Uh, you know, I doubt people uh, that members have done that sort of thing on a regular basis 
before COVID happened. And then COVID happens and we see the beauty of doing good things for each other and, and being able to connect with each other that way. That's right. And just how much of an impact that really has, especially when you don't have you just take it for granted usually. Yeah. Even when it's harder, like you're pointing out the fact that we were doing that, Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by the love for one another. And we got to, I know the pandemic's not over. We got to keep doing that, taking advantage of that, of loving each other in these tough times. As the year kept going on, the end of May, there was a tragic event. That's right. George Floyd was killed. Um, uh, Black Lives Matters, uh, Matter, BLM, BLM. There you go. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Dyslexia. Um, (laughs) Protests led to riots just throughout uh, early summer and uh, was there any of that here in Lubbock I know the protests and riots are different but did you have anything like that uh, there was a few people downtown um, it wasn't really a, a riot it was a it was a protest and it was peaceful that's good it wasn't yeah, a riot. yeah. I think yeah. it was more of a, a fear of that something was going to happen but I think for the most part um, it was it was a peaceful protest around here at least yeah yeah Keith was oh, I don't know how much I was supposed to say but uh, <laughs> someone, <laughs> yeah, someone, you know, um, at our church. Yeah. A lot of the, I know, just know, I, I just know a lot of the, uh, the cops and the troopers were going to Austin because it was more of a threat there than it was, you know, here. Yeah. They were all over the place. I saw a big, a, a big demonstration. Uh, my wife and I were in Santa Fe and we were walking downtown to get some pizza and we saw probably a mile long wow. herd of cars coming mm, down, man. honking their horns at us. We were the only guy, people on the streets that were honking their horns, waving their uh, waving their signs. And I was like, hey, we're just trying to get pizza. Appreciate it. So, <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you get that we pizza? We did. We got the pizza. Nice. It was delicious, by the way. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Got, got the pizza. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't here yet. I was out in, the, in SoCal in the Los Angeles area. And Ken and I, no traffic during COVID down there. That was nice. But uh, I remember driving through downtown LA because of traffic. Oh, there was some traffic, but I had to get off and uh, get on the side streets. I remember seeing the tank down there, and I was like, oh. And I'd seen the National Guard come in. So a lot of fear uh, for a lot of people. And then through the month of June, kind of a second wave hit. Uh, if you forget, this was an election year, too. Yeah. Biden was declared the winner of the Democratic primaries. In July, if you care, sports started coming back. And then in August, what did we have go on there? We had some uh, fires on the West Coast yeah. in California and Oregon, your side of the, the country. Uh, One million acres burned and 4,000 homes lost in Oregon. Wow. Uh, 8,200 fires in California burned 4 million acres. Wow. All right. My aunt sent me a picture. She was up in the Salem, Oregon area. We'll have to, maybe we'll put it on the screen um, right now. But uh, it was like noon. It was like 1 p.m. Like it's high noon. And it just looked apocalyptic. It was like a dark, not even like a hazy, like a dark like cherry red, blood red almost in the middle of the day. It was really scary. We could even see okay. some of that in in here. Yeah, here we in could. The, in you public, saw some yeah. of it. Some of the smoke. Yeah. And then in September, we had uh, more tragedy happen as RBG passed away, and the U.S. had hit 200,000 COVID deaths. And then in September, Netflix got in some trouble as well. Yeah, uh, Netflix in September released on September the 9th a movie called Cuties, uh, released by a uh, a French director. I won't uh, yeah. mangle her name at the moment, but uh, the plot of it was 11, 11 year old girls uh, who, well, 11, a 11 year old girl who joined a dance group known as the Cuties. And anyways, there's a lot of provocative dancing. Uh, some have compared it even to child pornography. Um, a Texas grand jury indicted Netflix for this on sep- September the 23rd for possession uh, or promotion of lewd visual material depicting right. a child. Uh, at this moment, the the movie is still on Netflix. The director is actually defending her position on it, saying that it was a film that was meant to uh, decry against exploitation of children sexually. It was an interesting way to do it. Uh, but this reminds me, I guess the, the reaction reminded me of Elijah in 1 Kings 19. We see um, that whenever... Elijah felt that he was running away from Jezebel uh, yeah. because he had killed, uh, he had put her prophets to the sword. And he, he's speaking to the Lord at Mount Horeb. 
and uh, says to God that he is the only one who is upholding God's covenant. And God lets him know that that's not true, that there is still a 7,000 remnant left in Israel who has not bowed to Baal. And we saw uh, in reaction to this story, over 600,000 people signed an online petition uh, that they were canceling their Netflix and was urging other people to do the same. Uh, and we just we see that as much as we feel like darkness is creeping in on the world, we're not alone. So take courage in that. We see a lot of fear creeping in. But even in these these times of uh, when it looks like the devil's really getting a hand, we're we're not alone out there. There's still a lot of people. That's a good point yeah. and a good tie in. Yeah, and then moving on in October, uh, we see that um, COVID is is hitting everywhere. Um, and, and nobody's immune, even the, the world's most powerful, successful people. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Donald Trump gets COVID. Um, and then, you know, we've got the election uh, amidst all these things. And over $13 <laughs> billion dollars is spent on the Biden and Trump election. Wow. Um, and then uh, we see, you know, all the controversy of the decision on the su- Supreme Court mm-hmm. justice. Um, and then uh, we see that Amy Coney Barrett was appointed um, through that process. Yeah. October was a big month. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it was. I was just going to say, it was a weird, all that money spent and all that fighting. And I, do, do y'all think that Trump changed who's going to run in the future with money? Like, are we going to see more celebrities or th- was that think, a freak I think thing? So. Wasn't, uh, didn't you put Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, Johnson into yeah. the, the mix? Yeah, I, I think, mean, you know, I don't know if he'll run, happen. but <laughs> <laughs> But I, I could see that happening. One of these days. Yeah, you should. You got the money <laughs> to run? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> may, pull out of my savings or something. But if someone like Tom Hanks ran, you know, next election, I could see him. Wait, you, know, you think really Tom Hanks good. would win president of the United States? You think Donald Trump would win president? In okay, so in a fight, who would win, Tom Maybe. Hanks or Dwayne Johnson? Um, oh, in a fight, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh, man. So all that's going on, and we come to more recent times in November, multi-day election results because of mail-in ballots and things of that nature. And I think just about all news platforms just about declared uh, Biden as the winner. Of course, Trump refused to concede. He was saying there's some election fraud, and I, that's still going on right now. They're still in the courts trying to hammer that away. And then still, throughout all that chaos, you kind of get a third wave of the virus into December. December. It leads to 300,000 deaths in the U.S. That's 1.7 wow. million deaths worldwide. But there is hope for 2021. FDA authorizes COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and so that's something to look forward to. I, I heard, like, in Feb, is it February? Maybe March? Sometime near the, nearing the summer and the spring, it should be available to everyone. So. I was hearing like May or June. No, oh, that's that's good too. Sorry, not any, to put a name on. <laughs> I'm all in here and hearsay and things like that. So but aren't I, they already? Aren't they already rolling out some vaccines to, to frontline yeah, workers? Front, yeah. yeah, I think to some elderly too. And then of course all the politicians get to have it first, and they have to sit in front of the camera and look good while they while they get their vaccines. Well, so that's, that's happening like right now. <laughs> 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 that's happening right now. So uh, before we get into our devotional segment just off the cuff, because a lot of this you can't help but notice is heavy, and we're talking about fear and not being alone in in a dark world. Does anyone have, like, something good from 2020, like a a highlight you can think of or something good? Maybe it was just personally in our lives. What was something that just jumps out that was a good thing? I had my first child, and that is there is no – there's almost no blessing like that. Hmm. I mean, obviously, whenever you uh, decide to take on the name of Christ, that's the most important moment in your life, and – um, marrying Rebecca, second most important, that's beautiful. But watching Walker uh, come into this world and, and knowing that I'm responsible for another person's soul, that is, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. But there's uh, no fear, COVID, uh, f- or, you know, who was getting elected that was taking that away from me. That was beautiful. That is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Wow. And then you got That's married, nice. Caleb. I did get married, yeah. yeah I mean, it's <laughs> kind of big, you know. I, I was all over the place this summer. I was in Florida, <laughs> school got shut down, and then it was go back to California, COVID. When when we, when my brother and I flew back, no joke, there was like maybe a dozen of us on a full-blown Boeing 747. It was really freaky, and mom was like, don't touch anything, and like, you were <laughs> really scared. Um, and then Kendall and, and our, our wedding was 
not obviously going to happen with our venue, but it ended up being nice because just our immediate family. So it was eight of us. Each of us have a younger brother. We drove up to the mountains, a place called Mammoth Mountains or Mammoth Lakes, and we got married there. Just our family out in the field with the mountains in the background. So it was beautiful. That's awesome. um, it was intimate, but v- very different than what you thought. And then we came out here in the in the Texas where things were like more free. Like, look at this place. Like <laughs> people are actually positive. doing. It. Yeah, 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 another positive. <laughs> so what, um, what was that like going? from where they were a little bit more strict to coming to Texas. It, it, it was like, at first I was like, everyone's crazy here. Like, are we all <laughs> trying to get sick? And, and, then, and then I was like looking at the stats for myself. I'm like, no, I was like, it, it's not, it's, it's just two totally different cultures. Yeah. And they're their antithesis to one another. And I really appreciate that here that we're able to worship. And obviously we try and take precautions to protect people, yeah. but like churches still out there in California, um, you know, they're, they're either not able to meet or they have really restrictive limits on how they can meet. So we always have to be thankful, no matter where you are, um, to be able to do what we're doing right now. That's for sure. Do you have any positives this year, Ethan? Yeah, so 2020 has um, definitely, for me, been a year of growth. Um, yeah. yeah. A good. deeper understanding, like we talked about earlier, and understanding the importance of the church, um, but in a, in a different way as well. Um, I got to accept my first full-time job for after I graduate, so I'll be graduating in May. Um, as long as there's no more kinks along the way, uh, you know, six years six years is too long for for college. But uh, ah, but you did it. I did, yeah, you did it. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> I haven't passed my next semester's classes yet. So. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll kill it. We'll be good. That's awesome, though. Praise God. Well, thank you. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. And then you've got a kid on the way. Yeah, I got a kid on the way. January, I became a preacher, um, and so. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an eventful year for me as well, and uh, and then this podcast is another. Podcast <laughs> one, so. <laughs> so covering this whole year, um, obviously we have to find the highlights because no matter the situation, we better be thanking and praising God. But I know there are some legit concerns out there, but we have to have faith over fear. I think all of us here as as boys, if you if you will, have probably done something dumb where maybe it got us hurt. I've done that. I had like six or seven. I, got, I think I got stitches like six times growing up. Like I was that kid that was just knocked around and <laughs> like that, got hurt. Um, fear naturally is a good thing though, right? It's a, it's a good thing from yeah. God. It stops us from, you know, jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Stops most touching people. Touching the stove. Yeah, touching yeah. the stove. <laughs> Um, things of that nature. Uh, it can protect us from those kinds of dangers. But if there's no faith in God, fear will be let loose. It'll be misplaced and become tyrannical and, and controlling. Yeah, and, that's, uh, and when you say misplaced, that's the biggest thing. You yeah. know, Fear is a, it can be very beneficial. Uh, you know, we even know that the beginning of wisdom is fear, but who is, who is it fear into? And that's mm. God. The beginning of uh, fear or the beginning of wisdom is fear in the Lord. And yeah. we see the opposite end of the spectrum right now. Um, you know, Satan, father of lies, the liar. Uh, what we're really seeing a lot of uh, in many different aspects or many different uh, situations is Satan lying to us about what we should be afraid of and yeah. uh, we should be afraid of these uh, man, man-made disasters, these natural disasters, but not afraid of the, the Lord. So in Mark chapter 4, verses 39, I'll read this passage real quick. On that day when the evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were there with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that the, that we are perishing? Hmm. So if you remember, that's that's Jesus there just sleeping in the middle of a, taking a nap, <laughs> taking right. a storm. Would, would that be you, George? You get you chill enough to take a nap in a storm? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, the best kind of sleeping <laughs> weather. If it's anything like airplane, man, I, I'm not. That's not cool. But you know, if you look at it just even from Jesus' perspective, you know, he created these things and and. Uh, and we have to understand they didn't know, you know, at this point, they didn't really truly know the power of Jesus. And yeah, who he was. And who he really was. Mm-hmm. And then he stopped, you know, the storm. They're like, well, who really is this? This has to be the Son of God. That shows you, you know, who our fear should be in. It, right. It should be in, in the Lord. And if we, can, if we can mimic that, Jesus, he didn't have any fear. 
I mean, naturally, he created all that stuff from the very beginning. Yeah, and like you said, the disciples' fear switches from the storm, and and seemingly there's something to be afraid of. Like there yeah. are fishermen. It says the what? Like they're like, hey, wake up! Like we're we're gonna drown here. That's the scenario. <laughs> and and Jesus in verses 39 through 41, back in Mark 4, he awakes and he just rebukes the winds and the sea, saying, "Peace, be still." And the winds cease, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, "Why are you so afraid?" Really, a profound question. Is have you still no faith? And as George just brought up, now they're afraid of something else. Exactly. They were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And as Josh brought up as well, we realize if you want to not be afraid of the things of this earth, you want to be fearless, then fear the Lord. That's that's the lesson out of the story. Amen. Well, I think, too, that the, the kind of fear you know, that we're talking about is not the fear that we have as a kid of, of the monster under your bed or, you know, yeah. you're watching a scary movie and you're, you know, you're, you fear the scary monsters in the movie or whatever, but this is like genuine fear of, of real threats to, yeah. to us as humans. Um, and, and, you know, we, we understand that this virus is real and there's been so many that have lost loved ones and, and so many that have loved ones that are sick and still recovering from that. Um, and, and it's important to remember as Christians, we we have to have a faith that that through all that, you know, we don't, we're not going to um, not take necessary precautions, and we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that us and our family is is protected. But sure. we're going to go through it with the mindset of no matter what happens to me, I, my faith is in the Lord, mm-hmm. and, and I'm going to have joy in in those hardships. Right, that's really good. I mean, even these. Uh I mean, these guys are experienced on the water, and uh, and I think we need just to be more Christ-like in, in this way. And if we can do that, then people will see, you know, how a faith is meant to be lived, and and they'll understand that there's you know, a fear should be in something greater than than just the natural things of this world. So we should, like you were saying, we should take precaution. We should be logical in what we do, but we can continue on, and we can. We can go in there pretty courageous, knowing that God's on our side. That's being a light. And how you how you appear to other people. I mean, like you're saying, that's that's one of the biggest in in class and through lessons and in sermons lately. We've been talking a lot about how to reach out to others who are not a part of the kingdom as of yet, and how to break that ice, how to show that you do care about people, how to be a light unto yeah. others. And you really have to view. Uh, what the darkness is right now and right now what we see as the darkness is a whole lot of fear and how are we supposed to be a light into this world to be a light uh, to shine through that darkness is to show our our not uh, putting fear uh, above our trust in the Lord yeah and we're gonna have Ethan read Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 that's exactly what the apostle Paul tells us when it comes to a prayer life and a life of faith over fear Uh, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we fear the Lord, we will have peace in him. As we move into 2021, who knows what it'll bring. But as we move into that year, where is your faith going to be? Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. That's a wrap. See you. Go so. Good. I got a call though. You got a call? Yeah, in the middle of that. Dang, what part did it interrupt? I don't know. It was when Josh was talking. So oh, we might have to just for a couple seconds.